A hard me out is his pirate weekend in Plymouth. Don't forget your pieces of eight. I'm born here, was it? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
shanty we found in the Oxford Book of New Romantic Sea Shanty. It's oh, a yeah, five foot. You all know the words, do sing along. He's had such a hard life. <laughs> Sex and drugs and rock and roll and all that. It's a Rolling Stone then. <laughs> so um, yeah, this song's called My Son John. Do you want to go on that other one there? <laughs>
more song for you, but don't go away because we're going to be back here at, um, at some point later. <laughs> we'll be back here, won't we? Probably. Seems like oh, probably. Yeah. Let me have a listen. Let me have a look on my list. Next time the cannons go off, we'll probably do a bit after that, shall we? Cannons at two o'clock. About two fifteen, we'll do some more for you. Yeah. <laughs> But before then, we'll do one more. Now, I should explain to you, we are the Pirates of St Piran. We are a non-profit making charity fundraising group. We raise money for the RNNI, Children's Hospital South West and the Cornwall Air Ambulance. Um, so every penny that goes in there goes straight to charity. We don't take a penny of it. Um, if you want to buy CDs, come and see our CD mistress. She's over there. She's the seediest mistress you could ever wish for. Stop telling me! Sorry. Uh, we'll do one more for you. This is called Powder Keg. Oh, and there's a very, very good sing-along chorus. <laughs> you will know the words. They are O, O, O. Did you get that? Do you need me to repeat it? O, O, O. You can't go wrong with it. You'll know where it comes in. Ready? One, two, three,
us to move out of your, out of your shop. <laughs> Pirates in the House of the Jackal. Have you enjoyed the weekend? It's good, yeah. <laughs> well, you've been to, be, uh, been to Pirate Weekend before? Yeah, we came yeah. last weekend. Except I didn't dress up last weekend. The you mean last, last year? year. <laughs> last you don't have it every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year. Last yeah, year. And we also well. came to the one before that. Yeah. Nice one. So is this your first year dressed up? Yeah. This is my second year dressed up. And what's your name? You're a trader in the Vatican. I am Becky Elwell. And what do you do? I make chocolate. Oh, it smells good from here. <laughs> Thank you and chocolate's good for you. <laughs> Chocolate is good for you, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank you very much anyway. Thank you. If you haven't got any cash, don't worry about it. There's a cash point just down there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mark, is this the £10 note baby? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Rebecca Eve. How are you? You've got fudge here. What shop's it from? It's from Edwards Fudge Kitchen. Oh, yes, Thank you. This is rum and raisin. Is this your business? It's not. I'm a happy employee. And how long have you been working? Two weeks. Two weeks. Really? Yeah, yeah. What's the taste of the fudge? Absolutely lovely. All handmade on the premises. All natural ingredients. Absolutely delicious. Do you make it? I'm learning to make it, yes. But my colleagues are making it in there at the moment. Nice one. Yeah, you're welcome. And you as well. And if you want to go up, and set off. So you can see for yourself. Cheers. All right, just up on the right hand side. All right. I've got to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Right, come on. Oh, let's go. Something's gone a little bit weird. Right, one over there. Ah. Is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 One over there. One over here. Go on, in you get, mate. Don't be, it's no good being shy now, sunshine. <laughs>
HMS Nymph, a ship under the command of Captain Edward Pellew, based here in Plymouth with the Channel Fleet. Now we chose this vessel because Edward Pellew is a local hero of ours. He also had the honour of capturing the first French frigate of the French Revolutionary Wars, the Cleopatra, in April of 1793. Now the men you see before you are armed with a series of different weapons. This is to represent the usual armament of a ship's company while they were in action at sea. We have everything from cutlasses that you see on the side there, the figure of eight pattern, 1792, all the way through to the India pattern brown bass musket and the sea service pistol. Now the, the weapons that we're going to be going through today are all muzzle loading, the majority are flint lock. This refers to the, to the mechanism that the musket or the weapon itself is using. Now Mr Goodman on the end there is armed with the sea service pattern pistol. Standard issue pistol to the Royal Navy from the years of about 1740 to, to the early 1800s. It is a very, very similar version or system to that of the musket, just condensed down again with a half ounce lead ball which compacts to the size of a bottle cap when it enters the body, punching all the way through, taking bone, muscle, cloth, anything in its path with it. Now, if I have Mr. Goodman about face, and he's about to discharge the pistol, so Mr. Goodman, prepare to about face, if you'd like to about face. So he's now gonna fire the pistol. Half cock. Prepare to give fire. Give fire. Unfortunately, uh, these fentanyl weapons are notoriously haphazard. Captain Cook um, recounted a time in which he asked for the Marines to be brought forward. He said, lucky the natives, barely half the weapons actually went off. So we're going to give Mr. Goodman another go and another attempt to fire the pistol. Mr. Goodman, when you're ready, give fire! <laughs> Again, the flint can simply move out of shape. Unfortunately, in the warm weather, sometimes the pan can get a little bit sticky, a little bit hot, again, making it harder to go off. In the, in the rain, these weapons are essentially useless because the powder that we use is loose and it uh, ends up becoming a small porridge-like consistency, again, incapable of firing. This is why the men were issued with bayonets as well as issued with swords. 90% of the conflicts that were actually resolved or fought during the 18th century were resolved with hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's the easiest way of assuring a victory. So, Mr. Goodman, one more attempt, if you please. Prepare to give fire. Fire! You may about face. 
So that was the sea service packets, again, one of the weapons that was issued to the Royal Navy en masse during this period. Now you'll also note that the two men to the fore of the unit here are armed with flint lock muskets. This is the standard weapon for the British Army and the Royal Navy for about 250 years. Now the men have been trained in the period correct drill, 1764 manual at arms, so I'll take them through a little bit of the motions of the manual exercise just to show you that the men are in fact familiar with it. Be alert, try to follow up. Prepare to support, follow up, support, follow up. You can see the men there taking the weight of the musket, a very, very important position that was taken on board ship, especially during watches. Prepare to shoulder, follow up, shoulder, follow up. Prepare to order, follow up, order, follow up. Now the men would practice this every other day from dawn until dusk. So they became so proficient with this that they could essentially do it as second nature. Prepare to shoulder, follow up, shoulder, so that's a basic manual exercise commissioned by the King in 1764. Now who would be interested in seeing if these guns would go off? Oh, I, I don't think that's very appropriate. A little bit louder? Oh, I don't think you really want to hear them, do you? Yeah! There we go. I think that's a little bit more enthusiasm. So, take care to prime and load your firelocks. Position off prime. This will be a dry run, gentlemen. A dry run. So you see the men have now brought the musket down to about waist height. This gives them access to the lock. The musket comprises of three parts, lock, stock and barrel. This is where we get the turn of phrase from in the English language. Half cock. Rick. They've now manoeuvred the hammer or the cock back onto the half cock position. This means the musket itself is now trigger safe. It should not go off half cocked. Paddle cartridge. So the men have now accessed a small cartridge, a cartouche that would be pre-rolled. Prime. Shut pans. Rig. So they've now poured a small amount of that powder into the pan, securing it closed with the frizzen, a hardened piece of steel, which can create sparks when the flint strikes it. Cast about to charge. So they've now gained access to the muzzle. These weapons are muzzle loading, so anything that you wish to load or fire has to be placed in the top of the musket and then rammed home. Charge. Withdraw, ram rod. Ram. Replace. Recover. Prepare to about face, about face. This now is the signal to the any officers in the area or the officer commanding the unit that the men are in fact now ready to fire. Make ready. Present. Fire. Bang! Flash of the pan. You may have noticed there that the men have actually shouted bang to make up for the sound of the gun not going off. Though another did also shout flash in the pan. This would relate to, the, to an instance where the charge in the pan of the musket went off but that did not discharge the main uh, amount of powder in the gun itself. Again, a very common occurrence with these weapons. <coughs> We've got a shoulder fire lock, shoulder fire lock. Better about face, about face. So we will now be going through a live firing of the muskets, <coughs> now that you've seen how they would have done it by command. Gentlemen, take care to prime and load your fire locks. Prime and load. So the command prime and load would have been given in the heat of the action. This is the command where the men now load their muskets in the quickest amount of time possible and begin independent firing. You may notice that the men become very, very skilled in this process. They'd be under the command of their bosun, possibly the sergeant as well from the Marines, giving them a basic understanding of how to load and fire the weapons to the best of their abilities. A little bit slower, Mr. Knight. Prepare to about face, about face. Make ready. Now we are about to fire the muskets. It will be a little bit of a loud bang. So again, do cut your ears and open your mouth. Gentlemen, present. Fire! Prime and load! Now again, as you can imagine, a single man armed with a musket on his own is fairly useless. This is why they would often stand in such tightly packed ranks so they could get the most devastating amount of fire. The muskets themselves do not have rifling in the barrels. 
This would make the ball spin, allowing you to be a little bit more accurate. But the muskets themselves don't have this. So therefore it became important to have the men stand together and fire in such large groups. This could be fairly devastating at sea when firing onto a packed deck or even into some of the gun decks further down. Mate, ready? Present! Fer de joie, starting with Mr. Mitchell. Fire! You can see again Mr. Mitchell having a little bit of trouble with his musket there. Unfortunately these guns, as I've said before, are notoriously haphazard. So you've now seen the firing of the flint lock musket. Now what we have in front of us here is a swivel gun. This is a, repro this is a reproduction of one that was discovered on the wreck of Captain Cook's vessel. It's a small half pound piece, meaning that the charge of powder required is a half pound of black powder. Now this is not enough to actually sink a vessel itself, it's more of an anti-personnel weapon. What would be used inside as a projectile would be anything from grape shot, a small hessian bag containing uh, musket balls with a large amount of black powder in the rear, all the way through to canister, a baked bean tin sized can filled with broken nails, broken glass, musket balls, anything that was lying about that they, de that they decided could cause damage to the enemy vessel. The Royal Navy at this time is primarily a business. The crew would be given uh, bounty money and a prize money for any vessel that they took from the enemy. This now meant that they weren't in actually interested in destroying vessels so much, but more essentially rendering the crew unable to function to then board the vessel and then take her as a prize. Now you see Mr. Mitchell there, the senior man in the crew. He's what's known as a gun captain. It's his job to oversee the loading and the firing of the gun. He would be more of an experienced gunner. Crews are aboard NIM, for example, there was 44 of them, ranging from eight to nine men, and the majority of those men were required to simply pull the piece back into its position. This will be rather loud, but we've been at events where there have been 24 pounders, even 64 pounders going on. Quite literally, the ground does shake below you. Now, the first thing that you see the men doing there is they are searching the piece. They're using a worm-like implement, or a corkscrew, I should say, which is searching for any debris from a previous firing. They'll then proceed on to sponge out the barrel with a, with a wet sponge and a, a non-wet sponge. Again, attempting to cool down the barrel before they put the, the charge of powder and the projectile on the inside. Now, we haven't arrived at the position in yet where a flintlock mechanism has been added to the, to the firing. So it is a small charge of loose black powder put above the touch hole and then the linked stock is brought forward with a small piece of match cord which is glowing hot which then gives fire. The loading and firing of these weapons is very very similar to that of the musket that you saw earlier. Again it's all muzzle loading at this point. He's now bringing forth his artillery devices. Again something to prick the charge of powder on the inside just to allow him access to that main charge inside the barrel. Now again, this is going to be rather loud, a little bit louder than the musket, so again, do watch out for your hearing. Your order for that. Gun captain, prepare to give fire. You may fire when ready. We are about to fire the swivel. Do be warned. Mr. Mitchell, you may give fire.
again, as you can probably imagine, a battle such as Cape St. Vincent. Firing at the same time. That small amount of smog that you saw descending would have been several miles thick and deep. This is what we've come to know now as the fog of war. You can smell that it smells a little bit like rotten eggs. This actually acts a little bit like a laxative if you breathe it in. For the new man on board ship, something like this would have been quite terrifying. And ma many of the men serving aboard Nymph were local tin miners from across the, uh, the Devon coast, also uh, agricultural labourers. The loudest thing they probably would have known was the mooing of a cow and the nagging of their wife. To come into a battle situation where guns are going off, it can be all-encompassing. This is why the discipline and the drill of the men was so important to ensure that the success of what they were about to undertake. Mr. Mitchell, prepare to get fired. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be firing our slow for a second time again, so do be warned. Mr. Mitchell, we may fire when ready. taken from the Society of King George III, a society based in Devon in Summer. Hello, Glenn, how are you? I'm all right, Chris. Where's Tom Bird? Uh, up Jack there. Oh, that's Jack Sparrow. Oh, hi, Jack. Hello, <laughs> Hello there, Rose <laughs> Cohen. <laughs> how's, how's it going? Are you enjoying Pirate Weekend? The yes, two, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the weather is out and uh, the, the seas are high. Well, they're not that high, but, you know, yeah. They just smell a bit. They just smell of it, yeah. <laughs> the low tide smell, you know, and seaweed and all that. Why is yeah. it when people dress up as a pirate, you always have to put on that sort of half Irish accent? Well, it could be the kind of Johnny... I know, don't. Johnny <laughs> you you don't. Yours is uh, Central European or... Um, uh, no, it's uh, Mexican. Mexican, yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so, have you enjoyed Pirate Weekend? Yes, yes. Quite and nice. how's your artwork doing? I was doing good, I guess. Yeah. Still working with glass? Yes. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tom? How's your artwork doing? It's fun. Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Like, um, <laughs> kind of working on quite an ab, well, kind of surrealist piece. Uh -huh. And it's out, out at sea, it is. Oh, uh, Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hello, Brett. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, Matthew. Where's, yeah. Where's your boat, Brett? Pardon? Thanks to the organisers and everybody involved in the Pirate Weekend 2018. Don't get your pieces of me, Chris Muffield Video 2018. Hard Pirate Weekend 2018. And if you can help to get your pieces of me, I'll make the CCS photo one at you, Bald at Cobb. Hard me, Pirate Weekend 2018. Don't forget your pieces of me.